in a in a modern time. So we have this uh, kind of communist uh, project called the ethnic identification uh, movement going on there uh, during the 1950s. So this is also a historical event that make what the Hmong are right now. So uh, at the, in the early modern times, say during uh, the late 19th century, uh, early uh, 20th century, so you have this early Kuomintang, well, called the Republican um, Party, Kuomintang and Sun Yat-sen, uh, perspective about ethnic group in China. So you have this, uh, they only, you know, you see, at that time they only recognized five peoples. The Han, Man, Manchu, and Mongol, and Muslim, Hues, and Tibetan. Han, Man, Mongol, Tibetan. So there's no room for a Hmong or Mian. Uh, so, uh, that it's pretty bad, you know. So, uh, when uh, when the uh, Republican you know party uh, you know got into power and uh, fully controlled the, the country, uh, situation got even worse. The Chiang Kai Shek's during the Chiang Kai Shek's term, you know, in 1930 to 40. And he's got this name, notion of one people, one nation, and one state. So there's no ethnic, according to his opinion, there's no ethnic group, uh, no ethnicity at all. But everybody, you know, you have this Hmong group, you have this uh, Tibetan group, and they are all just manager, branch of Han Chinese. That's his fancy idea. So, so he will send someone to go to Guizhou, ask the governor of Guizhou to go to go to the market, and then when you see anybody, any Hmong, you know, uh, wearing uh, Hmong traditional clothes, cut your, cut your skirt. Say, you have to change your skirt before you can enter the market. That's that was really bad. That's a, that's the worst time, you know. For, for, for Hmong people and uh, uh, other ethnic groups. Um, so, uh, so that creates a lot of protests and from scholars and native uh, literature. Uh, by literature, I mean, I mean uh, the native people, say, including Hmong people who can write in using Chinese. Uh, writing system. So these are kind of considered intellectuals. This uh, this kind of intellectual elite actually uh, uh, protest against uh, the policy. So the government, Chakashi government, have to maintain uh, a department in his government called uh, you know the Mongzhang Wei Yuan Hui, the uh, Mongolian Tibetan uh, Commission. You see, you have five people now. It's, it's only two people uh, got recognition. So, uh, so that that's Chiang Kai Shek's uh, idea and uh, his, uh, his his action. Then, of course, there's no moans, There's no room for for Hmong uh, at all. So then, then during that time, the communists actually uh, was emerging as the powerful forces at that time. You have the CPC means uh, uh, Communist Party of China. So Communist Party of China, they, they just want to get the power, you know, uh, and also they have their own agenda, and of course they want to uh, uh, attract to people to join. So they have a lot of good proposals as well. So their perspective about the ethnic group, including Hmong, uh, are better than Chiang kai So that's how you know, things work out. So uh, even during the, you know, the so-called Long March, uh, the, the communist, the communist uh, uh, military forces have to flee 
uh, from the middle side of China all the way to the northwest part to to avoid you know strong attack from Chiang Kai Shi to survive. So during that long march, they have to because they have to find the uh, places to go through. So the places they found, they, they wanted to find is just those you know remote area without much uh, strong forces uh, of Chiang Kai Shi. So they kind of target geared towards those remote mountain mountain areas. So they, uh, a lot of the Red Army went through those, uh, the, those areas and uh, get to know Hmong people. Okay. So, and they also uh, recruit a lot of uh, you know, those uh, uh, young Hmong uh, youth into the, 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 the army and into the party, into the political organization. And you have this kind of uh, 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 a significant body of uh, Hmong revolutionists, uh, you know, uh, in, in their system. So these people got the idea from Marxist and Leninism as uh, argument, a theory for ethnic equalities, things like that. And they, they, of course, they, they, they felt uh, the Chiang Kai-shek's policy is so bad. Uh, we want to work out something uh, through the communist system. So this is what the uh, uh, the Hmong revolutionists work with other ethnic groups, uh, you know, uh, counterpart, and kind of propose this system called the ethnic regional autonomous system, which means that you uh, we're gonna we're gonna designate designate a region or land for you know each ethnic group so that you can run your own autonomous government over there. That, that that's the idea. And when when the when the communists still stay it's kind of like a uh, not in full control of the whole, whole country and they stay in the Yan'an, the west part of China and they test they test out this proposal in two areas. One is the one with the Muslim Hui and the other was the Mong Mongol in Inner Mongolia and it went well. So they think that this system must be a good one to work. So after they took over the whole country, they just want to scale up the whole system. And so, uh, so because they kind of like a the communist, the communist uh, government is kind of like a, a grateful to the to the other assistance uh, gaining uh, gaining from the ethnic minority during the very difficult time. They just want to pay, pay back. They want to scale up the, this uh, regional and uh, ethnic regional autonomous uh, system to uh, let them enjoy some the kind of like, uh, political right or self-governance. So the issue, this is a kind of a directive to say, oh, we now we want to you know, kind of implement this ethnic regional uh, autonomy policy or system uh, you know, na na nationwide. So whoever want to have self-governance, whoever want to have ethnic autonomous region, just raise your hand and report to us. Well, that got them into big trouble because they got more than 800 ethnic groups report uh, to them that they want to have ethnic regions. So that scared off the, 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 the government. So that's too, way too much. So they just want to uh, bring the number down to something like 30, 40, 50, or almost 60, so that it can be manageable. So, so now they have to kind of like identify, do a di identification. So are you really an ethnic group that's uh, entitled to this self-governance? 
So they want to send. They they actually they they, they recruit a lot of a lot of you know scholars, including native scholars, to go into the community and record their language and their culture tradition and have interview over there and you know and all all, all kinds of work like that and just to try to uh, identify whether or not your proposal for ethnic autonomy or uh, self-governance is eligible, really eligible. So, uh, and, and during that time, we have this kind of like a uh, more identification uh, occurred within this big project. So that's the background. And we have, because you have uh, more than 800 groups are, are proposed for, 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 for autonomous region. So that's too much. The government cannot really accept it. So government will say, okay, this is too much. You, goes, you guys go, go out to find whatever group of people that are most similar to your group. You want to kind of merge, merge all the small group into big one. So, uh, so, so, uh, so uh, for the Yi, for the Yi people, they have kind of like 80, 80 small group and speaking similar uh, dialect and language, have similar cultural practices. And they began to merge into a, a, a big Yi group. And for our Hmong people, uh, the same, the similar situation. We have this four, four group uh, representative went out and talked to each other and find, try to find commonality between themselves. So, and the the first one is from Yunnan. Say that's from the Han. Uh, like Baku's uh, clan, huh? uh, uh, and this Han Chao, Han Chao Zhong, um, his grandfather was a Qin Dynasty's royal general and fought against the uh, French invaders. So his family is kind of like a very prestigious in that area. So uh, he, 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 he served as representative of the mall in Vietnam, and he kind of went out uh, trying to talk to people, say, how can we, you know, kind of find our, our uh, common folks and get together and uh, allow us to, to be entitled to this uh, political uh, privilege. So he went out, uh, you know, talked to people uh, in southeast part of Guizhou, this uh, and he's uh, he used to work uh, as a high rank office uh, official, say the Kuomintang's uh, government. But uh, he later on he surrendered to the communist uh, you know government and work as a kind of like a, say something like you know representative in a, in in in, in, in a, uh, say. Uh, parliament of the uh, Commons in Britain. So, you know, you have this Parliament of the Commons, uh, Parliament of, uh, you know, like a, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So, uh, he, he's, he's a big, he's a big man. So, he's well educated and, and got the college the education and all that. So, he uh, represent people, the people who call themselves the Moon. Uh, well, you can see the a little bit different from the moon. Uh, and another guy, Yang Han Xian, he actually he was one of the uh, Hmong people who received a higher education in the early 1940s. Uh, so he's a, he's a, he's also a big uh, moon uh, uh, person. Uh, he served. I talk about that later. So uh, Yang Hanshan is, is representative for, for the Mao group, and uh, 
This old Bai Chuan, General Old Bai Chuan, at that time served as deputy governor of Guizhou province. He kind of, uh, um, you know, served as a representative for the Xiong group. So the four group get together, have uh, numerous meetings, discuss how they're gonna, you know, form a uh, a big uh, an ethnic group, and that will have the commonalities in language. So they have linguistic work with them, and I find out that you know uh, they have at least 46 um, common vocabulary in the language across all the all the different groups, and uh, you know even between the Xiong and the West. West, that was, uh, uh, I mean, the group called uh, uh, the, the Queen Mo, uh, Mo with uh, no age sign. Uh, uh, they share sixty-five percent of commonality in vocabulary. So, so this this will really help them to fit into that uh, you know Stalin <laughs> Leninism formula formula for. Uh, recognition of ethnic ethnicity. So uh, in that formula, you need to have common language, common uh, economic life, you have common uh, kind of like a similarity in neighborhood or settlement. Uh, you need to have a good feeling of belonging to, uh, uh, to the same group. Uh, say you have you, you you have a good sense of uh, sharing the same historical experience and that all come up very well for them so they came to the conclusion so we are going to accept the common word uh, used by the Han Chinese say meow in Chi in, in Chinese context that's what the, that's okay, but uh, uh, well, uh, anybody want to use that? Well, uh, it's okay when you use Miao uh, in a Chinese context, but uh, sometimes you cannot really use Miao with another word called Miaozi. Miaozi is really a derogatory, like, like China man something over here in the United States. So if you say Miaozi, Miaozi, uh, no people, that's okay. <coughs> so that's how that's how this uh, this uh, uh, so-called MIO uh, came into being for for all the Hmong people in China. <coughs> <coughs>